and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm Jen Liddy, your host, and today I'm sharing an interview I did with Colleen Camiso. Colleen is a teacher who needed to make more money for her family. They were in a bit of a jam, as she puts it, and she was willing to take a giant, terrifying leap to do it. In our interview, you'll hear us talk about why the people closest to us sometimes don't want us to take a risk or to do something that is action oriented or moves us forward. And it's actually kind of confusing if this has ever happened to you. Maybe you've wanted to do something and everybody around you tells you why it's such a bad idea. What I love in this interview is that Colleen shares how she got out of confusion. We talk about why this happens and she got really clear on what she wanted and what that felt like. And I want you to know she's not superwoman. She was scared and she did it anyway. So if you know someone who's looking to make a change of any sort, and maybe that's you, please share this interview. Colleen drops a ton of great advice and how-tos to help anyone move to the next level. I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy the interview with Colleen. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Liddy with Jen Liddy Coaching and Development. And if you've been following my page, you may know that I've been doing interviews with people that I love working with, who I know personally, who are badass entrepreneurs. Uh, the purpose of my interviews is to help you understand that if you, there's something that you want, you can have it. And I want you to hear it from other people than me. And today I'm interviewing Colleen Camiso, who I love her story in particular because she is a former third grade teacher who went into the um, direct marketing world. So that's like the MLM world. And then she went from there and she completely started a second business with another partner. And I'm going to talk way more about her and why I think her story is so special. But I want you to listen to what she says about how she went from being a teacher to somebody who's like living her dream as an entrepreneur and also making money while doing it. So Colleen, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's great. (laughs) Thanks. Plus, it's also fun to see you because we never are able to get together. I know. So it's good to be able to see your face and talk to you. <laughs> so will you tell everybody a little bit about who you are, kind of who you used to be, and who you are now? Like, let's just start there with the, the before and after. Yeah, sure. That's great because, honestly, I never in a million years thought I'd be doing anything but teaching. Uh, and it's just perfect timing being that it's September because, um, you know, I was just joking with my kids because there's they think I'm so happy that they're going back to school. When the reality is I'm not happy they're going back. I'm just really super happy that I'm not going back. <laughs> so, you know, I have been a teacher for 16 years when I started um, a side business in the MLM industry. And it's also something I never thought I would do. Being a teacher, I was, you know, I never saw anything different for myself. I didn't hate my job. I enjoyed my job. Sure, it was stressful. There was, you know, ups and downs. There was politics played in it. And there was stresses of of the kids and all of that and delivering and scores and grades and, and all of those things. But overall, I really enjoyed my job. I had my summers off, so I wasn't looking for something else. And when you're a teacher, I don't think you really do look for something else because it is a great job. You do have a great pension. You have a lot to look to look forward to, and there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, but I kind of always had this, like, there's something else. Like, mm-hmm. what else is there for me to do? And I really didn't I really never thought too much about it, whether it was another career or anything like that. But was it kind of like um, an itch that you had, or yeah. like just like kind of something more? There's something more. 
there's something more. You have, you know, you have a good career, you have a great family, you have a great relationship. It's none of those things, but you're always kind of like, there's going to be something more. Oh, I hear this all the time from people there. They're like, on paper, my life is so good. I should, they kind of shit on themselves. I should be so happy because everything, everything looks so good, but like, they're like, something's missing. Yeah. Yeah. And I was never unhappy or anything like that. I was just like, there's, there's more to life than, than the day-to-day rat race, I guess is what (laughs) I felt like. It was that day-to-day. There was, it was monotonous. I knew what I was going to do every single day and it was fine. It was great. But is there, I mean, is there something more? So, um, that was just kind of always in the back of my head. So when I had this opportunity to try this MLM company, I my initial instincts were, this just isn't me. I'm not a salesperson. I'm perfectly comfortable doing what I'm doing. Can and I just insert what an MLM is for people who don't know? Yeah. So MLM is multi-level marketing and the way you describe it, and I don't know if you're allowed to say who you work for, but um, it's, a, it's the company where there's a big company and then there's a whole bunch of people selling for that company. It's also known as direct sales, but it's multi-level marketing and just want to clarify that for people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the company I work for is Nerium, which is an amazing company. And I always had very kind of negative thoughts about it because you hear a lot of negative things sometimes about certain companies and MLMs. So I never ever even considered it. And the only reason I thought about it was because we needed a little extra cash on the side. Mm -hmm. At that point, we just, life hit us hard a few years before that. And we really needed some extra cash to pull us out of debt. So I decided to jump in and give it a try. And it really... It took off without me really even realizing it. And and it just started to grow from there. And it, it's grown to such an extent that over the past couple of years, and I will say that the company that I work for is so, so strong in personal development and really developing you as a person, not just their sales team, because mm-hmm. I'm not a salesperson. I'm mm-hmm. probably the worst salesperson in the world, which is funny because <laughs> I have a very successful business, but I don't sell to people. It's so, um, but it, it grew in the personal development that it taught me and the way I personally changed as a person was priceless. And from there, I really got into thinking about personal development. How come some women will take charge and make changes in their life while others, the first know they hear or the first time something goes wrong, they retreat back into their comfort zone. And so it really led me on this path of discovering a lot of what happens there with the brain and us personally as people and our drive and our motivation and which led me to getting my certification in positive psychology and developing a side business with my partner, Lisa Sears. So I have this awesome company with Miriam and then I have this really great thing I get to do, which is diving into positive psychology and helping people like you do really understand what they want out of life and how they can achieve it and what roadblocks they run into and, and all of those things that go along with it. So and make a long story short, that's, that's how I jumped from teaching, which was a scary jump to now being at home and having two awesome businesses. Yeah. Um, the thing I keep hearing the theme from you is um, I was curious and I was willing. I was curious and I was willing. And you, you keep saying, I didn't know how. I didn't know how. I'm not a salesperson. I'm, I'm a teacher. Nobody does this in teaching. <laughs> so I love, um, I think that those qualities are what differentiates you from the people who maybe have the itch, like you describe it, but never take the leap. And yeah. I want to I just say to everybody that Colleen's story is particularly interesting because if you are not a teacher, this is the teacher mindset. Thank you, God, for getting me this teaching job. I'm so lucky to have this teaching job. I will have it for the next 25 years until New York State gives me my retirement. And I will go in and I will work hard and I will take home grading. And then the next year, I go up to the next step and I'm on step 12 and I only have 11 more to go. And thank you for the $200 raise this year. But, but that's the mindset. Like, Nobody leaves teaching. And if you do leave, because I remember when I left, my colleagues were like, who are you? Where are you going? Are you kidding me? This is like the best district to teach in. How could you even think of leaving? And so it's kind of like as teachers, we get the golden handcuffs, but they're not really golden. They're like, you know, they're this. And I know so many teachers who feel like you do, like they want a little bit more. And the other thing I love about your story is that you started with a side hustle. 
you know, you didn't stop teaching. No. What was that like? What were some of the stories in your head when you knew there was more and you needed some money? So that was a real motivator. What was going on in your head that maybe was a negative? What were some negative thoughts that might have, if you had listened to them, they would have kept you really stuck? Yeah. So like you said, teaching and and for uh, many people are like love their teaching job. So, you know, this isn't for everybody, but if there is that kind of something else you're wanting, but you're feeling held back, it's okay to try. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. I went through all of those um, emotions of, oh my gosh, what if I fail at this? I'm going to look like a fool. I had very close, very close family and friends telling me that this is crazy. How could you even think about this? Um, I had people calling me, you know, retired teachers, people I really, really, truly respected calling and saying, you cannot walk away from teaching. <laughs> you can't, you, you, you're, and these are people I respected those are strong a lot. Voices. So those are strong voices, like very, so it, it weighs very heavily on you. Like, who do I think I am? Yes. Um, so I had all of those emotions, absolutely had zero faith that I could, well, I can't say I didn't have any faith. I had zero knowledge of how I was going to be successful. I couldn't see the end result, which is really scary. <laughs> and so I would have that negative self-talk all the time. And personal development was a huge thing that got me through and really just having to shift that thought process to, you know, a lot. And I'm like, I can't understand, even after I was successful and I was able to pull us out of debt and we were able to go on vacations and really adjust our lifestyle to more quality time, people were still saying, you should go back to teaching, which then started to make not, didn't make sense to me. I was like, so I should go back to something that I didn't wasn't loving anymore Mm -hmm. and just make bills and just make do and, and have that rat race of life. Why do you think they wanted you to do that? Like what what do you think? It was safe. It's safe. Um, You know, a lot of people's mentality is you need, it's safe. It's secure. Yes. What are you thinking? Rather than taking a step out of your comfort zone into something that teaching wasn't pulling us out of debt. (laughs) It just wasn't at that time. This pulled us out of debt and let us really have quality times, let my kids do, you know, travel sports that they couldn't do before and things like that. But in society and a lot of the people's eyes that staying in that secure position, and I'm not saying be irresponsible. I was never irresponsible with, with money or our future. Um, I had made really smart decisions and knew the security of my future, but for a lot of people, that's very uncomfortable for them to watch someone do. That's a really interesting point. For some people, it's really uncomfortable for them to watch somebody else do it. And how many times do we not want people to be uncomfortable? How many times do we stop ourselves because we don't want somebody else to be yeah. uncomfortable? That's mm-hmm. such a brilliant point. Like people are uncomfortable watching us do hard things. Even though they don't have to do the hard things, we have to do the hard thing. Right. Right. Oh my God, I love that. So while you were in this shift and really working on the personal development, and I know Nerium is really a, a great company for personal development and provides you guys with a lot of resources. Was there a resource that you picked up or a book that you read or a podcast that you love that really helped with your personal development on this? Oh gosh, that's a great question. There are a lot of them. Um, for, for an entrepreneur, I will say, and especially I think this is geared towards MLM, but I think really any entrepreneur can, can use this book. And it was the first one I read. Um, so in our, when we first start, we get the book uh, Slight Edge by our CEO, Jeff Olson, which is awesome. It's an awesome book. Uh, and it's really about just making those little changes every day to lead to a, a different lifestyle. But the first one I picked up, because it was recommended to me by someone who was super fast read, really, really easy. I started the book with zero confidence. I was like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Right. I just wasted our money, you know, yeah. joining this company. And I read this book and I shut it and I was like, if anyone else can be successful in this business, so can I. And it was GoPro by Eric Worre. Oh, I never heard of that one. Yep. It's simple. It's, it's to the point. It's just logical stuff that he talks about. And you're like, oh, right. <laughs> you know? of so that was probably the one that made me think, okay, I have no idea how I'm going to do this, but I can. GoPro, it's called? GoPro. Okay. Yep. 
and it's by Eric Worre. And from there, it was just kind of, I'm going to have good days and bad days. I'm going to have days where I'm absolutely 100% certain this is not going to work. And I just have to keep having faith that I'll figure it out. So one of the questions I have is this, which strategies or tools did you help? And it sounds like personal development and constantly going back to that personal development and assessing your thoughts was a big tool for you. Yes, that was, that was probably the biggest one. And then the second thing that really has helped me with both businesses and just juggling life, because mm-hmm. let's be honest, yeah. <laughs> we're like very busy. And even though I'm working home now, I probably work harder mm-hmm. than I did teaching. Sure. But when you're doing it for your own self and your own business, it's, it doesn't feel like work. Um, but I had to get organized. Okay, I was not organized before. I really didn't need to be super efficient with planning because like I said, every day was the same. (laughs) Throw a doctor's appointment or a sporting event in there. But other than that, it was the same. So I really had to get good at organizing and coming up with goals and really setting, okay, this week, this is the activity I need to do to move forward in my business and become really good at setting goals and following through with those. Mm -hmm. So how did you stay accountable to yourself when you were, when you did set goals? to achieve them? A lot of times, and I still do this now, is I find somebody that I, we hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. So I will kind of talk and we'll say, okay, this is what I want to do this month. And we'll be like, okay, I'm going to do this activity to get there. Either business, you know, we can, is works for it. And we would set the goals and we'd check it and we'd text each day. Did you do what you were supposed to do? Mm-hmm. Yes or no, you know, and it really helps keep you accountable. I'm pretty good at doing it myself now, yep. but a lot of times when I find that I'm not following through, I will be like, okay, I need, I need a partner. Let's check in with each other again. I wish you could talk a little bit about in the MLM world. I think that there's a lot of negativity, negativity out there about the MLM world. And my personal take on it is if you don't like the products, then don't buy the products. Right. <laughs> So if you don't like the products, don't buy the products. And if somebody is pushing them on you, then they're they're not being trained in the way they need to be trained. Like so I have I have opinions on it, but frankly, I have seen MLM direct marketing companies absolutely change the lives of women who otherwise would not be able to work or have their own businesses. So I really have an open mind about it. And I don't think that every uh, every company is doing a great job at training people the way that your company has done it. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about your perception of the MLM world before you got in it and any advice that you could give to somebody who's been thinking about joining one and like they don't see themselves as a salesperson. How did you deal with that? Yeah. So that's the biggest one I get is I'm not a salesperson. And I tell everybody, like, me neither. And I've been doing this almost four years. And like I said before, I don't feel like I've ever sold the product to anybody or the business opportunity to anybody. Yeah. And before I got in, I really viewed it as pushy, you know, and I can't even say from experience, it's just kind of that the out there, uh, yeah, judgment that people have about it. I also didn't like, um, I will say I did try one several years ago. <laughs> it was a bag company. They're fun. They're great. But you had to put on a show when you did a party. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so not me. And I just, I was, I was terrible at it. So I actually did try one several years ago and totally flopped because I couldn't be what they wanted me to be. Mm. So, which gave me even more doubt when I started this. One. <laughs> um, so, but I, I, I agree with you. I don't think all companies are as ethical and as mine as I really don't, but there are great ones out there. So I would say, do your research, mm-hmm. um, talk to people who are already in that company and like the products. If you're going to get into something where you don't believe in what you're selling, then it's going to be really difficult to do. With mine, I truly love our products. They're patented. They're great. I believe in them. And I've seen the results. So I can simply hand it to someone and be like, well, try it. If you like it, great. If not, that's okay. That's literally my sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's just, it's definitely a different world. And it's, it's, it just you have to do your research. You have to like what your what the products that you have and and believe in it. And I the the thing that really changed my thought process for this particular company was when I went to our first big conference, and the owner was on stage and he was saying, you know, don't work about don't worry about how many bottles you sell. Work about how much you're working on your worry about how much you're working on yourself. And I was like, oh, 
this is your company. Don't you want us out there selling as much as we can to build the, you know, and he was just kept driving home that be the best person you're supposed to be. And it wasn't even about selling the product. So that to me yeah. was like, okay, this is, so it's, is his take that the more work you do on yourself, the more confidence you get. And the more confidence you get, the more authentic you show up. And the more authentic you show up, the easier it is for people to trust you. Like, oh, try this thing because I'm trustworthy. Yeah. And, and he's like, I'm not a fool. He goes, I know that success doesn't bring happiness. Happiness brings success. So the more I can help you guys be the happiest you can be and be the best people you can be. He has, I don't know if any of you have seen the Live Happy uh, magazine or podcast, but he puts that out. It's a, it's a side company, but he funds the whole thing. It's called Live Happy. It's all about being a better person, living the happiest life you can you can live. And there's nothing about Miriam in there just mm -hmm. his passion and, you know, really making people better. So he definitely is a smart businessman knowing that if I help these people that come in and trust me, be the best person they can be, they're going to be more successful in what they're doing. And they're yeah, going to wow. stay in my company That's longer, right. really. It's, That's so admirable. Yeah. So this is the perfect foray into the next thing I want to talk about. There are a lot of unhappy people out there. I always say that, you know, as a, as a coach myself, I don't really believe that there's competition because there's so many people who need help. I feel like, I feel like everybody could have a coach because we all need somebody to help us be accountable and help us become better people. That drove you to go get your pos positive psychology certification. And I want you to talk a little bit about what that means, positive psychology, and, and why you were so driven to go get that certification. Oh, I love it so much. It's, it's, it's really, I would, like I said, with all of the whole Miriam thing, and I had so many people join my team and I would see people who had everything they needed to be successful, stop. Um, and then I would have other people that I was like, oh gosh, I don't know how, how this one's going to do. And they would have the drive to break down the barriers and be successful. And I was like, wow, you know, I, how come I can't predict who's going to be good at this, who's not going to be, who's going to be successful. It's got to be something with their mindset. And then, you know, I met Lisa and we really started, we were on the same page of we really wanted to help other people see their, their value and what they could bring to their lives, to the world. And so we were introduced to positive psychology and I'm like, that's it. That's the missing piece mm -hmm. that I want to learn. So she and I did that together. And it's not about happiness. It's not about, you know, how can you, you had a horrible day, put a smile on your face. It's not bullshit. You, know, you had a tragedy come up, just be happy. It's not about being happy all the time. It's about taking life and how can you look at it differently mm -hmm. to benefit yourself and your well-being? Um, you know, how can you start to think about things differently? How can you shift your thoughts? How can you shift the way you view a circumstance or a situation? to what's really going on for complete example is I had somebody give me some of their opinions about my business and how I, and I actually asked her for it. So okay. they showed it to me and I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. And for two years, I, I would avoid this person. I was like, Oh my gosh, she thinks I'm a moron for doing this. Like she looks down on me, even though I had this great success, I still was so worried about what she thought of me because she gave me her opinion one day and she ended up right. We, we never saw it. We were acquaintances, but never talked about it. Um, really saw, rarely saw each other. And I remember she wrote me on Facebook one day and she said, I just want you to know, I'm so impressed by what you did, you've done. And I wish I had the guts to follow my dreams like you did. That was a real turning point for me because I was like, I had put this thought, you know, I had made up this whole feelings that, and opinions that she had for me when it really wasn't at all. So I realized that I was in control of thinking my own thoughts. I was in control of shifting how I viewed situations and circumstances. And that's really what positive psychology is all about. Mm -hmm. How you can use it in your relationships, your everyday life, your parenting, your business, and just looking at life differently and improving your well-being throughout it. 
When I, when I owned my first business, I would have clients come in and they would say, I want to start a podcast or I want to write a book or I want to start a business. Can you help me? And at the time I was, I was only doing operations there. I wasn't uh, doing this work that I do now. And so I would pull stuff out of their heads and make a plan. And it was all very logical to me. And I would send them on their merry way. And then week three, week four, they would come back and say, I didn't, I didn't do it. And that's when I realized it was time for me to take the training that I had had teaching uh, personal development to college students. I was like, oh, oh, we need (laughs) mindset work. Oh my God, this isn't just about first I do this, then I do this because our thoughts always get in the way. And I love that you said, how, how can I predict and that is that is the it right there. Like if you have no confidence and you don't believe in yourself and you don't see your value, you're no, you might know all the hows and still never do it. Yeah. And so you're saying positive psychology can help you overcome those mental hurdles so that then you can overcome all the other things to start your business. Absolutely. It's tied so perfectly to my other business. And, you know, I've been doing a course on positive psychology, which I think has really helped people in all industries, whether you're a coach, whether you're a teacher, whether you're in an MLM or any business, sales, anything, just to start looking at every situation differently. It's amazing when people start doing that and they, you know, call you and I was like, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> it's so mind blowing for people the first time they dip the toe. I mean, I remember how mind blown I was when I first learned this back in 2009. I was like, yes. why doesn't everybody know this? Oh my God. Why didn't I know this until I was, what the hell was I 39 at the time? Oh my God. So let's talk about how people can work with you, um, how they can either learn more about Miriam and all that it can do or how they can learn how, more about that as a business and how they can learn more about what you offer with positive psychology. Yeah. So I'm going to be launching um, for the positive psychology. I'm going to be launching a course and it's got all of the modules for the, perm, for the PERMA-V model. Um, so there's six modules with several videos, workbook, everything in each to really walk you through exactly what I went through in my, my certification. You will have a certification afterwards as well. So simply let me know if you're interested. Like I said, I'm going to be launching in the next few months. <laughs> and I'd be happy to give you all the information for that. Uh, we also, Lisa and I are going to be doing is in January, we're going to be starting a mastermind for coaches and really how to, you know, you go through and you get your certification in coaching, which I've done that as well. And you're kind of like, okay, now what? So it's really taking people step by step, how to get started, what to do next, what you're going to need. Because as we were joking before we started this, you you spend a lot of money (laughs) figuring out because all the stuff that you don't need. Mm-hmm. you know, and trying to get to lay the groundwork. So we're going to be taking you step by step through that process. Mm-hmm. And as far as Miriam, I can't say enough about like the company and the products and what it can do for people. So if you're interested in, in learning more about it and what it involves, reach out to me and I'll, I, and again, it's not, you know, people are like, well, I don't want to be talked into it. I'm like, I'm not going to talk. I don't want to talk anybody into it. It's not for everybody, but it's for a lot of people. And it can do mm-hmm. some amazing things for people and their families. So I'm happy to share any of that information. With are you. all of these um, opportunities online? So Miriam is, you can go right to my website if you'd like. You can also message me on Facebook or through Jen. But my website for Miriam is just simply ColleenCamiso.Miriam.com. Okay. And then for any of the positive psychology or the coaching programs, that is BrassRingsTools.com. Okay, great. And then... What about your class? That that would also be found at BrassRingsTools.com? Yes. Great. Yes. Yep, that and will be up then, there. Okay. There was one more thing I wanted to ask you. Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about your idea of um, I don't want to be talked into it. I get this a lot from people. I don't sell. Like my, my job is not to sell. And I want you to see the potential and want to work with me. I'm never, ever, ever going to convince anybody to work with me. 
And I had a woman say, can you show me, can you show me all of your success stories so that I can convince my husband, which is, which is probably something that you deal with to people who want to work with you, feel like they have to convince their husbands or partners to spend the money on it. And I wanted to just take a moment to talk about that because my response to her was, I don't convince anybody to do anything because if you don't want to be there, it doesn't serve you. And if I try to convince your husband, all he's going to be doing is looking for evidence that you're screwing up. And so I think that if more salespeople and service providers like you and me could come at it from like, I'm not here to convince you. I'm just here to show you what's possible that maybe people in the MLM world wouldn't have such a hard time. You know, if they're, if they weren't constantly like pushing and instead pulling, I think that that's a, that's a strategy that, that people could start to get behind. What do you think about Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And that's, that's a lot of what I talk with my team about. It's, it's people are attracted to you. You know, it's not, they don't know anything about the business. They're not coming to you about the specific company. They're coming to you because it's you and they're looking for information. Mm-hmm. And I've had people say before, like, you know, I don't want to get on the phone with so-and-so because I don't want them to convince me. Mm-hmm. And I tell people, I said, I will be completely honest for you, with you. If it is not for you, I'm going to say it's probably not the right time for you right now mm-hmm. because it's not going to benefit any of us, you, me, anyone. You don't want you. an unhappy person on your team. You don't want an unhappy no. person. <laughs> no. No. And at the beginning of a business like this, because building a team does bring you in in revenue and more money, you're kind of like, anybody who wants to join my team, come on in. And then you realize, no, thank you. You know, you don't want some, if it's not for them and they don't have a reason because it does, you do have to overcome hurdles. You do have to be able to have that mindset. People are going to tell you no, and it hurts every time. Yeah. And people are going to tell you, people you respect and are close to you are going to tell you you're crazy for doing something outside of anyone's comfort zone. And that hurts too. So if you don't have a reason for doing it, if you don't have a why of why, what you're trying to achieve, you're not going to be willing to go through some of the things that you have to go through. If you do have a why, if you do have a reason, it is so worth going through those obstacles. And so many people that I talk to are living in that mundane, everyday life, barely making it by or in huge debt, but they'd rather stay in their unhappy you know, debt-filled world than just step outside of their comfort zone and just try something else. And so that is very interesting to me. And I'm just like, it, when you're ready, let me know. You, you know, know it's, it's, it's the way that I say this is um, you're, you're, you're uncomfortable in both places. Like this is yeah. hard. I'm, I'm broke. I'm tired of going to work. I don't like my boss. That's hard every single day. Yeah. And this is also hard. This like, well, what if I try this? What if I try a side hustle? What if I try selling? What? And this, the more you do this, it, this hard eases up this hard. There is ease on the other side of this hard, this hard, this like never gets easier. It's just the same. And so I, I call that like, you're just comfortably uncomfortable. Like yes. you're just going to live in the discomfort for the rest of your life rather than take the leap. And so the last question I'll ask you is for P for creative women out there who want more and they, they feel that itch that you felt, what's one piece of advice that you could give them so that they could maybe get to the ease rather than constantly living in the hard? So I would say, look at that hard. And is it, it's just comfortable. You know, it's hard, but it's comfortable. So you're willing to stay there. Mm -hmm. Think about what is possible. And I think that that stepping that what is possible world is, is emotionally hard because you're like, what if I try and I don't make it? Mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to be disappointed, but you're still just going to be in the same place you were before. So nothing's changed. And I'm always like, when you look back at your life, you're sitting in your rocking chair in your last days. Do you want to be like, well, I played it safe Mm -hmm. and you know, we were broke, but I was comfortable. Or do you want to say you tried Mm -hmm. and you went for it? I would much rather. And I think about a lesson I want to teach to my kids. You know, when I tell my kids that they can be anything they want to be, I believe that. So, and I want them to always believe that. So I need to believe that about myself first and just, you will be so much more proud of you. Even if you try and you fail, you know, you'll be more willing to try again. Yes. Because it's like you build up the muscle or you build up a callus really. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And when you realize that you're the mm-hmm. only one paying your bills and raising your kids and whatever else things starts to fade away. Yeah. <laughs> 
And then you get happy and you're like, oh, who cares what they think? Go ahead and live in your, live in your miserable little dark world. Okay. Yep. (laughs) Colleen, I can't tell you how many good lessons you shared with us today. Thank you so much. This was so valuable. I will be putting, for anybody who wants to work with Colleen, I'll be putting the links below so that you can check her out. Um, I love, I'm actually excited about her psychology, your positive psychology course. I'm going to check that out for myself actually. And, um, you know, check out her Nerium page. That will be also below. But if you want to chat with somebody about how she did this, I know that Colleen is really open to chatting. So please, you can PM her. I'd follow her on Instagram. She is wonderful on Instagram. She's always a source of positivity and light. And when I see her post, I'm like, yeah, I needed that today. Even though I teach it all day long, I still need it too. So uh, follow her and I'll put all of her handles in the comments below. Colleen, thank you again. I really, really appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for having me on. This was fun. It was fun for me too. Thanks. So I want to just kind of wrap up this interview and tell you that as a former high school and college teacher myself, I know personally how scary it is to leave a secure paycheck to make the leap to do what you really want to do. And as someone who lived the lifestyle of an educator for more than 15 years, I know that I couldn't imagine the freedom that making that leap gives you until I actually did it. So you might be listening to my podcast and you might be wondering, that's for other people. How could I do that? I don't even, I can't even imagine what that would feel like. And I want you to know that I really understand. So just maybe dipping a toe is where you are right now. I want you to know that's, that's just the perfect place to be to start. If you follow Colleen on the socials, like she suggests in her interview, you'll notice that she shares her positive psychology and she gives help, but you'll also see her living a lifestyle that teachers just can't live. If you're craving freedom, if that's one of your core values, then it's time to do something about it. And remember, it just might be dipping a toe. You don't have to take a giant leap all at once, but staying where you are living in confusion, telling yourself you don't know how, well, that'll keep you exactly where you are right now. I want you to know in my Idea Space online group coaching program, I've got 10 spots left to help women get exactly where they want to go. It's designed to move you forward in a way that feels good for you. I'll help you solve the problem of not having enough time. I'll help you clear out what's going on in your mind. And I'll help you make your goals goals real. It's a three-month program. It's open for 10 more participants at the $97 a month level. And after that, it's going up to $197. So go to jenliddy.com and click on the idea space to see if we're a good fit. Reach out because 2019 is your year to get out of your own way. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the Idea Space in your podcast app or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.